Welcome back. We are on chapter 14, Honoring Our Emotions. When we talk about it on paper, detaching or reducing our level of attachment to something doesn't sound so difficult, does it? If we find ourselves in an unhealthy situation, we walk away. If we fail to reach a goal, we try again. If we want to make a change, we move forward with our transformation. There is no need to complicate anything. We keep it simple, moving from one interaction to another without becoming too attached to any one outcome. But in life, that rarely happens this way. This is because we are human. We're not heartless robots. Our emotions rise to the surface and we initially feel pain when we try to reduce our dependence on things outside of ourselves. The things to which we are most strongly attached. So the question is, how do we deal with the emotions that arise on the path? It's important to keep in mind that our emotions are real and should not be ignored as if they don't exist or stuffed away as if they aren't valid. Emotions create the most authentic anchor we have to ourselves. The whole spectrum of emotions, fear, love, jealousy, insecurity, anger, joy, are very real. But here's the thing. What triggers those emotions may not be real. At this point, you probably understand how this could be true. Emotions help us communicate with each other without the ability to express what we are feeling and to recognize how others feel we would be at some disadvantage. Take the example of my son, Alejandro, who is diagnosed with high-functioning autism. We are teaching him how to express his emotions so that we know what he is feeling and he can interpret what others are feeling. One of the tools we use is a teddy bear, a gift from his aunt, which shows different emotions. We are also teaching him the words that go along with each emotion. This is the most basic use of knowledge, and it is necessary for each of us to learn this throughout our lives, as early as possible so that we can express our sense of self and convey our needs and desires within the dream of the planet. Some of us, like my little girl Audrey, are really good at sharing what we are experiencing emotionally, and some of us are not good at it yet, like Alejandro. Still. An emotion is present with or without a label, with or without a facial expression, an emotional truth. Again, what we are experiencing is real, but what triggered that feeling could be based on an illusion or a distortion. Here is an example. I am holding my newborn son, Alejandro, in my arms, and I am filled with bliss. I am not thinking, I am simply allowing this moment to engulf me. The emotion is real. The moment is real. I have not created a story in my mind. Then, let's say that I am holding him, a little thought grows in my head. What if I lose him? All of a sudden, that illusion, that insecurity, that fear has stirred in me. The little seeds of fear take hold, and as I am exposed to a completely different emotion, I feel the fear of losing my son engulf me. I go from a moment of complete bliss to a moment of pure terror. The trigger was an illusion, but I still felt the emotions. Our emotions, regardless of the triggers, are expressions of ourselves. These are the important questions to ask. Are we aware of the triggers? Do we know if the triggers are based on reality or if they're based on faulty information? Is the trigger based on an attachment to a certain belief or expectation? Whenever I'm upset, I know something that I hold to be true has been put to the test. I look at the agreements inside and out and ask myself, is it an agreement based on truth or an illusion? I am very attached to that agreement. If I am very attached to that agreement, I might end up using a lot of my energy to keep it alive. If I have to struggle that hard to give something life, it cannot be very solid, can it? If I become skeptical, I am giving myself a choice once again to believe that agreement or not. Uncomfortable emotions are like car alarms. They let us know there is a problem to attend to, a wound for us to work on, thus allowing us to see our own truth. Whenever an emotion gets triggered, it is the opportune moment to ask questions such as, what is this about? What agreement is at the heart of this? What attachment does this threaten? Do I really believe this? Is it important? 
Answering these questions gives us the opportunity to examine our beliefs and choose whether or not to continue to believe. We honor our emotions by realizing that they are an expression of how we feel and what we are going through. We look at what has triggered our emotions while still allowing ourselves to simply feel. We further honor our emotions by having the awareness that they may have been triggered by something not based on truth. Thus, we are using our emotions as a tool for transformation because they completely expose whatever agreement has been hiding beneath the surface. I am grateful to my emotions for telling me the truth. For it is only through exposure that we regain the power to choose between I will continue to agree and I am ready to let go. Clearing away the smoke from my reflection. When I look into the mirror, I perceive myself in this way. I am Miguel, a Toltec, a Nagual, a Me Mexican American, an American, a Mizoto, a husband, a father, a writer, and so on. When viewed through the rules of my attachment, this is the list of self-definitions that I might use as conditional models for self-acceptance. When there are conditions for self-love, it is because my perception is controlled by internalization or fanaticism. However, without attachments, each and every one of these labels is just a definition that I can choose to either say yes or no as part of my identity. I can simply choose one of these identifications as the perf preference by which I engage life for the moment. My awareness gives me the opportunity to see my reflection as I am in this moment. This, The mirror is reflecting my truth, a physical body that is an empty symbol. Much like the words in the above list, whose definitions is dependent upon my agreements, whose definition of self is dependent upon my agreements, even with definitions it is still reflecting a living being with full potential to go in any direction, regardless of the name we give it. Even a name such as authentic self, it is simply reflecting life. Looking into a clean mirror without the filters of my belief system, the smoky mirror, I perceive life as the I am. The clean mirror is the awareness that reflects the full potential of life. How I define myself and what I say yes or no to, the execution of my intention, are my choice. If I choose, I could call this awareness the authentic self, the representation of life in the form of this body. Whenever I choose, I see myself just as I am. Imagine looking into a mirror and seeing yourself just the way you are at this very moment. Without self-judgment, maybe you become aware that there is something that you are interfering with your if there's something about you that is interfering with your health, physically or emotionally. That is the truth of your body right now. When you look into a clean mirror, you do not make self-judgments based on that truth nor do you identify yourself as being unhealthy in some way. You simply look at yourself as who you are at this very moment. Now, from a place of self-love, you could choose to take an action based on your perception, which, in this case, is seeing the truth of your condition of your health. The action is not a condition you place upon yourself to earn self-love. This action is not a condition you place upon yourself to earn self-love. You love yourself for who you are at this moment. Whether you make a change or not has no bearing on this love. This isn't complacency. You are actively making a choice, and that choice is the action of your intent, your full potential. There are 360 degrees of possibilities surrounding you. This point, this now, is your potential. To move forward in any direction is to make a choice. You say yes to something and no to all else. This is true regardless of whether or not you are aware of, your, of the infinite possibilities present in each moment. As described throughout these pages, the more attached you are to something, the more your vision is obscured and narrowed. Sometimes to the point where you are convinced that there is only one way to proceed. 
Your attachment to your belief cuts off your ability to see beyond that one possibility. So, as you make choices to let go of your attachments that no longer work for you, your options seem to grow and expand. But what you are really doing is increasing your perspective. All possibilities are there all along. Reclaiming our power and gaining our freedom. As I mentioned in the introduction, my grandmother was my first teacher in the ways of our tradition, and it was through my apprenticeship with her that I learned to quiet my mind and trust my heart, allowing inspiration to flow through me. My grandmother also taught me the power of faith, especially in God, whom she credits for her abilities as a faith healer. In her later years, she began waking up at 3 a.m. to pray and meditate with her rosaries and candle. Then she would begin healing, working and consulting with people in need throughout the day. When I completed college, my father became the teacher of our traditions. Through guidance, through his guidance, I faced all the attachments I had created throughout my life, letting go to the point where my every wound was painfully exposed. In this way, I was able to heal from the pain of my own creation. It is not easy letting go, especially when the things we believe about ourselves, even those that cause us pain, provide a familiar comfort zone. When we place our personal importance of knowledge and when we place our personal importance on knowledge and that is taken away, the crush the crash is very hard. Eventually, through the continued and authentic process of releasing our attachments, we find that who we are requires no justification to accept ourselves. This realization is very powerful. It is like letting go of the railing when you are certain you are f free from any dangers of falling. At this time, my dad was spending time in Oceanside, California, and my grandmother was there for a visit. Always looking for a teacher teaching opportunities, my father recognized an opportunity for a lesson. Miguel, he said to me, your grandmother is afraid of death. Help her let go. I looked at my father with astonishment. My grandma turned to me and raised her eyebrows as to say, oh really? I swallowed. I did not want to do this. Miguel, help your grandma. Tell her why it is okay to let go of her fear. I immediately got up, and as my grandmother had taught me so many years earlier, I cleared my mind, allowing myself to act and speak without attachments to my thoughts. My job was to help her let go of her attachment. Level 1, Authentic Self. I guided her wheelchair up to a big mirror in the hallway. Grandma, look at yourself in the mirror. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are the most passionate, smartest, and toughest person I have ever known. Imagine everything you hold to be true. Your family, your children, your Bible, your rosary, your incense, your candles. You have faith in all these things. And the same faith allows you to perform miracles for others. You may have said that it is God who has healed people, and while that is still true, it is also true that your faith allowed you to do it. Your faith is so strong that everything you believe in comes alive with every breath you take. It is your attachment to this physical form, to which you give life, that keeps you from wanting to let go. Look into this mirror, Grandma, and imagine these things all around you that you hold dear. Your faith is so strong that you put Sarita in each and one of each and every one of these single things. In the same way you have given life to your thoughts, your beliefs, and your ideals, these things are alive because of you. It is time to take your energy back from these things and release your attachments to them. Let go of the fear of what you are holding without them and what you they are without you. Let go of the fear of what you are without them and what they are without you. When you take back your power from these things, you will no longer identify yourself by them. Then there will be only you. You 
are and your image of Sarita, your body. When you are ready to let go of this final attachment, you will pass away in peace. Madre Sarita kissed me and nodded. She passed away about a month and a half later. She lived to be 98 years old and she was always helping others. My love and gratitude for her are always going to be with me. While we may not be talking about literally death here as we discuss the prospect of letting go of our attachments, we are talking about the potential death of how we identify ourselves. The things we love, the knowledge we have, the ideas we create. Everything we hold so dear is alive with us, within us because of the energy we give it through our attachments. It is easy for us to attribute a power to something outside of ourselves than it is for us to see that we are the power that gives things in our world life. We are the ones responsible for ourselves and our reality. We are the creators of our own dream. This is why our self-judgment is so strong and alive with a force that could hold us back and rooted to the past. We gave our narrators the power. Fortunately, we do not have to die to reclaim it. Independent of the attachment that weighs us down, each one of us has the freedom to live a life to the fullest at any given moment. The field of possibility awaits our next step and we could take that step confident in our ability to do so. When we are aware and see the truth of the infinite potential that is ultimate freedom. Woo! That's chapter 14. Just a couple pages in the afterward. Uh, we'll finish it up. Here we go. Afterward. I've experienced a lot in life since I first started my apprentice in my family's traditions. I have felt the ups and downs of life, from confrontations to harmony, from feeling anger to fear and happiness and love. I have learned that the key to all forms of transformation is awareness. The starting point for any form of transportation is to set our willingness to accept our truth at that moment of awareness, a moment that moves with us along our path of transformation. I developed an attachment to an outcome when I first started my work, but when I continued into a process that goes beyond that attachment, I saw that there is an attachment to everything I have ever perceived. And only because I was afraid of the unknown, I saw that there was an attachment to everything I have ever perceived, and only because I was afraid of the unknown. We feel most at ease with our safety net, of course, but as we begin to move outside that safety zone, the levels of attachment begin to, begin to take shape, and my understanding of my grandmother's lessons was reflected in my life. We all want to be part of a group or a community, to find that place that allows us to feel as one. We are always looking for that communion. So in the end, all of us, all of this work is the ability to have a harmonious relationship with my brothers, my sisters, and myself. At first I thought it was about a quest to discover a hidden secret of life, glazed with incredible stories about the metaphysical, but this practice really is about life itself. It has always been about creating a clear channel of communication with the people I love, starting with myself. Understanding the five levels of attachment is the beginning of reestablishing an unconditional and unconditional relationship with ourselves. I start by recognizing that my life is worth something and that my body and my mind are the tools by which I am able to express myself in love, intellect, and awareness. Knowledge turns to wisdom when the information that describes the world is a clear reflection of truth that flows and evolves along with us as we move throughout life. Love starts with me. We do not all live in monasteries or an ashram where we are surrounded by people who are working towards the same end, allowing one another to enter into a silence and work at, on our process. Rather, we live in a dream of the planet where we are continuously interacting with people who find themselves at various levels of their own attachment. As we interact with others and want harmony in those relationships, the harmony starts with us. We become aware of ourselves and accept ourselves, and we are then able to give to others what we hope to receive in return. 
The discipline of staying in that awareness while being able to relate to others is called controlled folly. This mastery cannot be stated started without first becoming aware of our own truth. And the five levels of attachment are the instrument that allows us to see our present truth with more clarity. As we begin to reconstruct our personal dream with greater awareness to our personal great work of art, which is always in progress, we have the ability to choose to create the most perfect harmony if that is our desire. In the end, it is all about seeing knowledge as the building blocks to co-create a dream with another person while maintaining our awareness of self. I enjoy interacting with the dream of the planet. I enjoy using knowledge to communicate my dream with you. I enjoy playing with the world that surrounds me with respect and love. I am part of this creation. We could all become aware that this is love that bound, bonds us together to one another. We can love each other with conditions or with respect. The difference is harmony, a form of heaven on earth. When we have respect for one another's free will, then we have peace. For me, home is longer. Home is no longer a physical plane. Home is me. It is everywhere my heart and love go. Wherever I am, that is where I call home. What better way to express our freedom than let go of the wounds that have kept us oppressed? What better way to use my words than to say I forgive you? What better way to say I am free than to say that I love another without fear? Let us enjoy this moment in life. The past is done, the future is coming, and the best way to say hello is by learning to say goodbye. I am love and peace starts with me. I do not see race, creed, religion, gender, or whatever else a division of the human species. I do not see a belief that tears me away from my brothers and sisters. I do not see an ego, a personal importance that forbids me from communing with everyone and everything in existence. The point of life is to love, and to do so is a choice. In that choice, I take action, and in that action, I am love. I have a voice. I could use it to oppress, or I could use it to liberate. I could create, I could lead, and I could love. The same is true for you. Together we say, I love all we have and are is love. And that concludes the five levels of attachment.